morning, everyone, and welcome to this 21st Sunday after Pentecost. You can tell when we get higher up in the numbers that we are getting close to the end of the season of Pentecost. A few more weeks, and then we'll be in Advent, and then Christmas. Oh my goodness, time goes so fast. So welcome to this service if you're watching later at home or those who have gathered here. I was making jokes about Noah's Ark. I always do that when it rains. Gets a little tiresome. Sorry for the same old jokes. Our service begins this morning with a hymn about a lot of weather. And it just seemed like the right hymn for today. Wind upon the waters. So please stand as you are able. And hymn 408, Wind Upon the Waters. Thank you. Christ our Lord. Amen. 
sing the loud as they don't move. for today is Psalm 104. I will read the light print if you will respond with the whole. Bless the Holy One, O my soul. O God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and splendor. You rest yourself with light and spread out the heavens like a curtain. You lay the beams of your chambers in the waters above. You make the clouds your chariot. 
chariots. You ride on the wings of the wind. You bring the winds your messengers and flames of fire your servants. You have set the earth upon its foundations so that it never shall move at any time. You cover it with the deep as with a mantle. The waters stood higher than the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They went up into the hills and down to the valleys beneath, to the places you had appointed for them. You set the limits that they could not pass. They shall not again cover the earth. We will go forth to our work and to our labor until the evening. May these words of mine please you. I will rejoice in you, my God. Glory to God, our Creator, to God's most holy word, and to the Spirit in dwelling, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the gospel. Before. 
is the latest term of what's happening over our heads. Mm -hmm. An atmospheric river. It seems like the water is above and below in equal measures. We're swimming in a sea of water. Now I treasure this book of the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, that we call Job. Has anybody spent any time reading or studying the book of Job? Maureen did a bit. Oh, good. You want to come give us her? <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> when you're awarded at St. Barnabas, you have to be prepared for anything. My, my, uh, my dad read Job a lot before yeah. he passed. Yeah. yeah, Job is an amazing book. Maybe we should study it once we kind of get back to normal, if we ever get to back to something normal. Let me tell you a little bit, because we jump, we're jumping in here almost at the end. So Job was a very, 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 very successful man. He had more than anything, than everything, than anything that anybody could ever ask for. Camels and donkeys and wine and sheep and food and slaves and probably wives. I don't remember that part. Maybe children. He is living the life of glory. Everything is going perfectly. He is a man who sits at the gate, meaning he's also a judge of his people. He's respected. He's wealthy. Everything has gone right. So does that mean... We wonder, did he do everything right in order to have everything go so well for him? That's kind of the key of understanding Job. Well, Satan has an idea, and he has a chat with God. Remember, this is kind of a myth of our Old, of our old Testament. And Satan says to God, what would it be like if things weren't going so well with Job, would he continue to praise you? And so God agrees. Everything dies. He loses everything. He gets very sick. He sits on a pile of garbage and scrapes at his sores with a broken piece of crockery. That's how bad it is. So now we're asking the question, what did Job do wrong? Or was God the one who is doing all of these nasty things? Job has three friends who come and insist in different ways that he did something wrong. What did you do wrong, they ask him, in order to receive this judgment from God? But Job hadn't done anything wrong. He'd followed the rules. He was obeying the rules. And this just happened. Bad things happened to a good man. Job is in such despair that he questions God. And he says out loud, why was I ever born? I should have died within my mother's womb. That would have been better. And that's when God comes in with this answer that Maureen read today. In the whirlwind, God comes and says, were you here? And it's a bunch of questions. This may be where Jesus got the idea of answering a question with a question. If you read it again later, it's nothing but a series of questions. Were you here when I did this, when I did that? And God in this theophany, this expression of God is expressing what that power is. There's no answer yet. We'll have to wait for next week for the answer. But it is a good time to stop and think and wonder. If we went to the edge of the universe, what would we see? Could we? Of course not. If we could have been around when the dinosaurs were stomping around and volcanoes were blowing up, what would we see? What would we think? What would we believe? Job, in this story, 
is the epitome of the story of what happens when bad things happen to good people. And Job, in this story, next week, will be restored to his place. Not of humiliation, but of humility. Those words have the same root, but they're very different words. Humiliation is to have your heart taken away from you. Humility is to sit and know your place as beloved, but not as God. We are not God. We carry the image of God, and that is a very different thing. In the Gospel reading, James and John, two of the faithful disciples, are walking along, and they come up to Jesus, and they ask him this question. What do you think it means to sit at the right and the left hand of someone powerful? You're going to get the best food at the, at the banquet? You're going to get the best treatment? Are you going to get everything your heart desires? Are you going to have more power? Is that what James and John are after? They see that Jesus has the power of God to heal and restore, and they want part of that power. What it shows to us is that they still don't get it. In the Gospel of Mark, the disciples are always those ones who don't understand. And it's kind of where we can put ourselves into the story. Why are we Christians? Why do we come here? Do we think we're going to have more power and more things by being a follower of Jesus? Some Christians might think that. But Jesus is very clear in this story today. He has already told his disciples three times about how it will end, at least seem to end for him. And who is with Jesus at his right and at his left in his death? Not people of power, but the disciples are still imagining Jesus power, having power in this kind of way. So then I guess the question for today is, what is God's power like? It is both that whirlwind which we can't even imagine, and it is also that power to heal to transform, to love one another, especially those who are hard to love. It has been a hard, really hard, 19 or 20 months. And here we are, wondering how to be church now. How are we to be faithful disciples of this God of love. What are we to do now? There isn't a direct answer. There is only a way of preparing our hearts to live with one another, to reach out to one another, to love one another, we don't have to like one another necessarily, I always say that. We don't have to be best friends. We don't have to sit around and watch the baseball game and go everywhere together and check in on each other every single minute of every single day. But being the church means having that deep love for one another, especially those that we don't know that well or don't fit within our circle of who we think are our friends. 
So friends, as we gather in these days of rain and storm, may our hearts be kindled by our faith. May we remember that God never lets us go, even, or maybe even especially, when we don't understand. May that faith be ours, yours, and mine, this day and forevermore. Let us say together the words of this affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in the Holy One. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature died for us, and rose again. We believe and trust in the Holy One. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to all people and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in the Holy One. This is our faith. We believe and trust in God, the author of all that is, in God, the Word, through whom all things came into being, in God, the Spirit, who enlivens the whole creation. Amen. Now please stand, sit, or kneel, as is your custom for the prayers of the people. Hear us, O oh God, 
Confession and absolution. Happy are those whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned. I will confess my sins to the Lord. I will not conceal my wrongdoings. God forgives and heals us. We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us. Some escape us. Some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. God forgives you. Forgive others. And forgive yourself. Please stand as you are able. Beloved brothers and sisters, in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace. peace be with you. Remember when the peace used to take 15 minutes? <laughs> our hymn, our offertory hymn is number 601. God who's giving knows no end. Do you have a hymn book? Rick? Do hmm? you have a hymn book? Oh, I don't. Oh, let's get Rick a hymn book.
bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, so that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, eternal God, source of all being, for your eternal and faithful love. You call us into friendship with you and with one another. You call us to be your holy people, a sign of your presence in the world. When those we trust betray us, unfailingly you remain with us. When we injure others, you confront us in your love and call us to the paths of righteousness. You stand with the weak and those broken and alone whom you have always welcomed home, making the first last and the last first. Therefore, we raise our voices with angels and archangels to proclaim the glory of your name. supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, he gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, you do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim our hope. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Recalling his death and proclaiming his resurrection, we pray that the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the universe, will breathe on these gifts that we bring to you. This bread and this cup ourselves, our souls, and bodies, that we may be signs of your love for all the world and ministers of your transforming purpose. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 
together the prayer after communion. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, so that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. So I've got good news and good news. <laughs> good news is Maureen has disappeared, and that means the, the tea is probably being made as we speak. So please join us in the hall for coffee or tea and snacks. And I'm sorry Chris isn't here, so we couldn't all give him a round of applause. Chris uh, Knowles is our, is our parish chef. I am now declaring him thus. He is a, a, a community uh, chef. And he cooked a Thanksgiving meal for us last week. So if you missed it, I'll let you know when the next one is because you don't want to miss when Chris is cooking. So thank you, Chris, if you're watching this later. And uh, we'll let you know when we have another parish meal. Um, sacred Singing Circle. This is the good and the bad news. We were going to try to do it per in, uh, per in live, in person, outside. We still don't feel comfortable seeing a whole gang of us inside, so unfortunately that was this afternoon at 2 p.m. We're going back to what we've been doing for the last 19 months, is doing it on Zoom. Hopefully that will change, maybe next month. I know it doesn't work for many people, but uh, Sacred Singing Circle, there's a Zoom link. If you haven't got it yet, you can look at in your emails and it will be there. Except for maybe yours isn't there, Rick, yet. I so I will it's get you the link. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and any other announcements? Anybody remember anything that I should be announcing? Um, oh, yes. Um, the Cookies of Gratitude campaign is continuing. Uh, we had our first uh, cookie making session two weeks ago. We are making uh, homemade cookies to take to uh, healthcare workers at Royal Columbian Hospital. So we were able to take 64 or 62 little packages of uh, cookies, and we're going to make more cookies on Thursday. So if you are able to drop by Thursday at uh, 9 a.m. to about noon, we'll be making dozens and dozens of cookies. And if you're a cookie maker and you want to make cookies at home, as long as you're following the safety protocols, and then we're packaging them in little, in, in little plastic baggies with a note of love from us to them. It's just a small act of... Of, uh, gratitude that we can do for all that the healthcare workers have done for so many people and, and especially since they've been having some bad treatment which I just don't understand at all so this is our way of love the uh, woman who received them the volunteer coordinator there was in tears when I delivered them she just couldn't believe that and I said it was from the church ladies I thought it sounded really safe it doesn't mean the boys could come and help but if anybody wants to come or make your own cookies at home and deliver them here before 2 p.m. on Thursday. Our food ministries are carrying on on Wednesday, and all sorts of stuff is, is ongoing. You've seen, please continue to pray for the, the roofers, our roof. Uh, we, we've, we were ready to have it done, well, 15 years ago, but we had the money and we were ready to go in August, but they have put us on the end of the list, which means we're getting our roof done now. <sighs> So pray that it doesn't have any more torrential downpours until we get that roof finished. Thanks. I guess that's everything. So let's say a blessing, shall we? <laughs> Beloved ones in Christ, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Our final hymn is number 435, Take My Life and Let It Be.